Well, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Doug Belshaw from the Mozilla Foundation. I suspect that some people might join us as we as we come along, and do feel free to, to tweet out what we're doing. Um, there's a hashtag which is Webmaker, um, and Vital is at Vital CPD. If you're interested in um, my kind of stuff, then I'm at DougBelshaw.com, and uh, I am D A J Belshaw on Twitter. But we'll get onto that in a moment. Um, I'm going to use SlideShare for this, um, just because my previous experience of Blackboard Collaborate when I worked at JISC, um, it threw a bit of a hissy fit if you didn't put the right type of files into it. So I'm just going to hit um, Share Screen, and then hopefully you should be able to see what's on my screen. If you've got any questions as we go along, um, it would be great if you could drop them into the chat. So um, to the chat at the bottom left-hand corner. And if it's a question, if you could preface it with a, a capital Q. Then when I scroll back through the stream, then I can see which ones are our questions. Okay. So um, hopefully you can hear me absolutely fine. Um, if you've done the audio setup, then you'll be able to ask me questions verbally uh, later. But um, let's crack on and let's get started. And I'm just going to hit the web tour button. Um, you'll be should be able to see my screen in a moment, um, and then we'll we'll get started. Here we go. Right, if I just have a quick um, ticks or thumbs up if you can see my screen at the moment. Or you can just put yes into the chat. Excellent, thank you very much. Right, here we go. So these slides are on SlideShare. Um, I'm DAJ Belshaw pretty much everywhere. So on SlideShare, if you go to slideshare.net forward slash DAJ Belshaw, they're the most recent ones I've uploaded. Um, I just want to walk you through um, just some of the tools which Mozilla have created, which I think as a former teacher, um, could be really useful for um, teachers in the classroom and, and also for um, informal learning spaces as well. So here we go. There we go. Right. So I'm going to start just introducing who Mozilla is, uh, why we've got this WebMaker um, uh, initiative, uh, why we're committed to that. And then three of the tools. And I want to spend the meat of the time going through Mozilla's Thimble, X ray goggles, and Popcorn Maker tools because I think they might be quite exciting. For you. Um, fourth, I just want to give you some a, a chance to spend five or ten minutes playing about with the tools whilst I'm here, so you can ask me questions. Because um, it's all very well me going through them and showing you them, but um, it's all you know. If you if you've got some questions when you play with them, um, it's valuable me being here and just on hand if you, if you want to ask any questions. Um, and then and then at the end we'll just round up with a quick question and answer, just thinking about where these tools are headed, how they can fit into curriculum, that kind of thing. All right. So let's get started. Um, my name is Doug Belshaw, like I mentioned before. Um, I'm Badges and Skills Lead at the Mozilla Foundation. I've been there for about seven months. Um, I'm at DJ Belshaw on Twitter. And so I spend my time working on the web literacies um, stuff for Mozilla, where I had a call about three hours ago talking about a new web literacy standard and also open badges, which you might have heard of. It's a new way to kind of credential and um, assess informal and formal learning. So that's me. Uh, and yes, Mozilla does make Firefox, um, and we are committed to that. Uh, but the reason why we make Firefox um, isn't because we're a browser organization. The reason why we made Firefox is because we're committed to an, an open web and protecting it for the good of everybody. So the Mozilla Foundation, who I work for, is a nonprofit organization, and we promote openness, innovation, and participation on the on the web. Um, so we stand up against people who want to commodify the web and shut it down um, and try and control it. And that's what we do. Um, and the reason why we made Firefox was because at the time that it was made, the Microsoft had been quite evil about um, people having to develop specifically for that browser rather than the web. Um, and we've been successful with that. And one of the reasons we're successful is because, for example, Google Chrome exists. Um, so it's not just about us having our own product. It's about making the web a better place for everybody. So that's why Mozilla's WebMaker tools exist. Um, we want to, we've got a mission um, which we kicked off last year. We want to create a generation of WebMakers. And by that we mean people who can not only elegantly consume the web, but feel like they can make it as well. So we've developed some tools and badges and web literacy work so that people can do that. Um, and this is Mitchell Baker, who's our, our chair, or as some people call it, Chief Lizard Wrangler. Uh, and she said, Mozillians are people who make things. Moving people from consumption to creation is Mozilla's goal. And that's what we're aiming at with, with WebMaker. So I want to show you some of these tools. I want to show you Thimble, X-ray goggles, and Popcorn Maker. And if I was teaching this, the way that I would actually in introduce these, I'd actually introduce probably X-ray goggles first, and then um, Thimble, and then probably Popcorn Maker. But 
your context may be different and it's up to you. So all of these tools can be accessed via um, webmaker.org, that's the place to point people towards. Um, and you can access them just by clicking on these, they're free, they're um, open source, you can find all the source on, on GitHub if you want to fork them or do anything with them. And you can see at the bottom there there's a Mozilla Webmaker newsletter which is worth signing up for because there's fantastic stuff which is shared on there. That's at webmaker.org. So these three tools, um, first of all I've mentioned Thimble. Now Thimble, which I'll, I'm about to show you, is a kind of a project based HTML and CSS editor. And you've seen similar things before where you've got the code on the left hand side um, and you've got a preview window on the right hand side. And the reason why Thimble is different is because it's got badges baked into it. You can level up using Thimble in your web skills. And it's also project based um, and that means that you can do things based on work carried out by the London Zoo, for example, um, and also other people just around the world. X-ray goggles, um, it kind of shows how the web is made up of different elements, a bit like um, Lego. So if people have never delved into the source code before, they can see um, in a very visual way how they can um, edit the web, how they can mess about with it and edit some of their favorite sites. Um, obviously, when you're introducing this tool, you'd, you'd say that you're not actually changing the BBC website. You're not changing a cached version, but it, it's a very exciting way for people who have never really understood that the web is made up of different blocks to be able to see how they can edit it. And then thirdly, Popcorn Maker, and I think Popcorn Maker is perhaps the most um, visually obvious of the, of, the, of the three in terms of the excitement. So if you imagine a, a non-linear video editor like iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, it's like that, but it's because it's on the web, it can pull in um, it's, it's HTML5 native, it can pull in things like feeds from Twitter in real time. So instead of like with iMovie or Windows Movie Maker, um, effectively that video being out of date as soon as you've made it, you can pull in things in real time in quite an exciting way. And I hope to show you that in a moment. So um, these, as I've said, are all accessible via webmaker.org and we'll just go to there in a moment. Um, and the first thing I want to show you is Mozilla's Thimble tool. And if you want to just listen to me and play along with it by yourself, feel free. Or if you just want to watch what I'm doing, that's fine as well. Because I am going to do a live demo now. And when you do live demos, sometimes things go wrong. So let's just have a try. Excuse me. I'm going to go to um, webmaker.org. And you can see here that um, we've got the three tools at the bottom, like you saw in the presentation before. Um, and I'm just first of all going to go to um, Thimble. When Thimble loads up, um, you can see some examples, there's my colleagues there, and you can get started straight away. And Thimble, you can either start from scratch, and let me show you what it's like when you start from scratch. This is what it looks like when you start from scratch. It's got um, the HTML and CSS kind of elements over here. On the right-hand side, it's got a preview window. So it works in real time. So um, Doug's awesome web page. When I do that, it changes that preview at the top. And here, when I change the P tag, I can put la, 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 and it does it there. You know, there's nothing new about that, but the thing which is new is that there's badges baked in and there's projects. So let me show you the badges. Um, if you do various things with the code editor, then you unlock badges. So you can see some of the ones I've unlocked already. Um, if I put a hyperlink in three times, for example, it, un um, it unleashes the, um, the hyperlink of badge. So you can see that there, look. Um, and various other ones as well. I want to go back though and show you some of the projects. And one of the ones which I really like is the London Zoo one. There's other ones as well, um, like a web arcade, various other things. There's lots of projects. If you click on see all projects, you can see all the ones that are, have been made. Um, we're working with people like O2 on this, and we're working with Lady Gaga's um, Born This Way Foundation. So there's, there's lots of like big, exciting projects to, to be um, had here. But I'm going to show you the London Zoo one because I think it's it's a really nice thing to use with kids because almost all of them are interested in animals in some way. So you can choose small, medium, or large. I'm just going to go for the, the large animals here. And so it's pre-populated with code. And you can see the preview window on the right-hand side. So it's got comments in. And now I, I know from experience as a teacher that kids don't tend to read comments. But the great thing is, with this one, they don't really need to because they can get stuck in straight away. And they can tinker around and see what happens. So um, for example, you know, they can do obvious things like changing the title. But, and that's just unlocked an achievement. Do you see that? You see it unlocked a, it unlocked a badge for me. You know, the fact that I've um, edited some code for the first time. 
Um, what we want here is they're fairly granular skill level badges. We, we don't want um, there to be a huge bar for, barrier for entry here. So literally you get a badge for pretty much turning up and, and changing something. But there's other badges which you can unlock for various things. And then you can push them to your badge backpack. And I might show you that later. But for this one, and I'm just using this as an example, what you're doing is you're changing out some images. So you can see here, um, it says, oh, that's not the way to do that. It says image source, and it's got an unknown PNG. But if you scroll down, and obviously you might have read some of this, um, it's got the, you can see here, it's got the, the this image here of a whale. It's split into three components, and the same goes for the rhino and the elephant and that kind of thing. And this is all about um, endangered animals, kind of black rhinoceroses and that kind of thing. So I'm just going to scroll down to the rhino tail, for example. I'm going to take that and just say, well, that's where that image resides on the on the web. And I'm just going to swap it out for that one. And you can see in a moment, hopefully, oh, this is where doing live demos is just fantastic. There we are. And an elephant's body. Every other time I do this, it works straight away. <laughs> the other thing is, um, it tells you when you're doing something wrong. So if you do that, for example, it comes up with a little exclamation mark, and it says, you know, the opening image tag here doesn't end with a, a closing um, tag. So they do that, something like that. Now, hopefully, I'm going to try this again. And to be honest, it might be my broadband connection. In fact, I hope that you can still hear me because my Rural broadband connection isn't so good. So here we go. Look, there we are. Um, I'm just going to basically make my own animal. And I know for a fact that my, for example, six-year-old son loves this kind of stuff. Oh, I've got two rhinos in. That's not good. You get the idea anyway. You can you can mix up your animals and you can change them around. Um, there we go. So you can change them around and you can mess them about. And basically, they're, they're understanding that when you change things, for example, images, you're pulling things in from around the web. And there's lots of different projects, and you can mess about with that. And it's all about leveling up through badges and being able to see what you do in, in real time. So that's Mozilla's um, thimble tool. Now I'm going to pause there and go back to the um, chat window to see if there's any questions. So I'm going to turn off, if I can, application sharing, um, and just see if there's anyone who's got any questions. Doug, you mentioned about Lady Gaga on O2. When would that um, project be ready? So there's a couple of O2 ones ready now. Um, they're born with this way foundation. Um, I, could, I think they're in code review at the moment, so they're, they're going to be ready very, very soon. Yeah. And we're going to be working with a number of partners to, to bring this kind of stuff. And the, the exciting thing is that because there's going to be an ever-expanding gallery, if your, if your um, students do something interesting, or even you as a teacher do something really interesting, you can sort of submit it to the gallery and have that featured for people all around the world to be leveling up in their, in their web skills using your particular project. Um, I invited a few people who I know through Twitter and various other things down to something called the London Learning Jam last year. Um, and actually, I'm just going to share my screen again, because there's a guy called Ian Usher, for example. Um, and Ian works for Buckinghamshire, I think. And he created, with, with some people, he created this fantastic one called Get Off My Lawn. Let's see if I can find it. And Get Off My Lawn, here we are. It's a, it's a zombie one. And the fantastic thing about this one is it's got HTML5 audio in. Now, I don't know if you're going to be able to hear this. Um, but because it's got HTML5 audio in, and because you can, what you have to do with this one is you have to move fridges and ovens about to block the zombies coming in your window. But the wonderful thing about this is, and I'm going to stop because I've got the zombies in my ear now. Um, the wonderful thing about that is it's it's basically exposing you to to different parts of CSS and HTML, so that. Um, you're based, based on your interests, you're leveling up um, in your web skills without even really realizing. Uh, and that's fantastic. So you can start from scratch, or you can pick a project with Thimble. Um, and I really like Thimble, because I feel like um, it's, it's a rigorous tool, and it's a, it's a tool which doesn't shy away from getting down and dirty with the code, but at the same time, it's scaffolded in a really interesting way. Okay. Um, 
All right, I'm just going to plow straight on then. Um, the next one I want to talk about is X-ray goggles. So X-ray goggles might be the first thing that you use. So when I ran a summer code party last year, um, as part of this big Mozilla initiative, we used X-ray goggles first. Um, and X-ray goggles, if, if if the people you're talking to have got no experience of remixing the web or doing anything creative, then X-ray goggles is is really useful. Um, so I'm going to go back to um, webmaker.org just so that it orients you and you know where to go. If I click on X-ray goggles, uh, it takes me down to here. Um, and it's got different projects here. But I'm just going to click on Get Started, the big blue button. And this is the first hack, as it were, in a vertical commas. And, and there's a whole conversation to be had around um, reclaiming the word hacking, for example. It's not just a bad word. It's something about remixing. So for this one, it's a very, very straightforward thing. It's um, copy this URL to your clipboard. So I'm just going to copy, activate the X-ray goggles. And this is available as a bookmarker as well. So you can take it around the web with you. And you can see that now, when I move my mouse around the page, it makes it shows me that all of these different elements are a bit like Lego. So what it wants me to do is to move my mouse over the image on the right um, of this Hacktivator person. Uh, press R, and it pops up with a box. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste in that picture of a cat that I just copied um, earlier. So there we are. Paste it in here and change the picture to Serious Cat. So click on Commit Changes. And you can see that I've remixed that page. All right. So once you've done that, um, we've recently re-implemented the ability to publish your page. There was um, a potential. It was never actually um, exploited, but there was a potential security flaw, um, which we've sorted out now. So when you press P, you can publish this, and you get your own unique URL. So publish to internet. Here we go. You get your own um, URL there, and you can share that on whatever social network, however you want. Um, and the great thing is people can then remix the work that you've done. So what I like about that is it's a really nice, lightweight way of getting people um, introduced to, to the fact that you can remix the web. And you can see here that it says, install the goggles into your bookmarks bar. And then once you've done that, once you kind of um, go into the bookmarks bar and install the goggles, so I'll click on there. Um, once you've done that and dragged it to your toolbar, you can go to any site on the web. So I'm going to go to my own website, for example. And I'm going to replace a picture of me with a picture of a cat. So there we are. This is my website. Click on X-ray goggles. Click on me and change that image of a crazy guy in a hat to a picture of a cat. And obviously, you can change anything. It doesn't have to be images. It can be text. It can be whatever you want. Um, and that often sparks some really interesting conversations around things like copyright, things like hacking in inverted commas, all that kind of stuff. So I find that a really, really useful tool. So that is X-ray goggles. Do you have any questions about that? No? OK, cracking on them. So the third one is Mozilla's Popcorn Maker um, tool. And this is this is quite exciting. Um, I've always kind of struggled with using iMovie and Windows Movie, Windows Movie Maker especially, because it used to crash quite a lot. Um, iMovie is, is a great tool. It's really slick. I use it quite a lot. But um, like I said before, sometimes you want to pull in elements which are live, which you can't do when you've already created the, fil the film of the movie. So, so here we go. I'm going to go back to webmaker.org. And this is under continual development, actually doing a release a week at the moment of, of Popcorn Maker. Um, and if we've got time at the end, I'll show you some of the things we're showing on the roadmap. So when I go to Popcorn Maker, again, there's um, projects and that kind of thing. And when I click on Get Started, it tells me, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to start a project from scratch? Do you want to take a tutorial? Um, do you want to remix existing projects and, and see what they've done? There's people like... Um, this is a WMYC Radio Rookie thing about, you know, they were really hacked off by the fact that they were getting stopped and frisked all the time. They, you know, they live in a, in a challenging area of, uh, of New York. There's fun ones, you know, how to make chocolate covered bacon. Um, NPR, which is a, a, a Canadian or American um, public kind of news broadcaster, used this during the Obama campaign. 
um, you can do some really exciting things with Google Maps. But uh, let me just show you this. So when you click on Start a Project, you get some sample stuff in there. Um, and you can just delete that uh, as soon as you want. So if you just click on the timeline, you can see here, then I can just you know hit backspace and delete anything which is in the timeline. But you've got layers, just like you have with any other nonlinear video editor. You can see that I'm signed in here at the top. So I can save this. I can give it a name. So I'm just going to call it you know, Vital CPD Test. Save that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pull in some, some video. You can see here this is just a, an MP4 file which is hosted on, on a website somewhere. But I'm going to go to YouTube. Or it could be Vimeo. It could be anywhere which, you know, Daily Motion, anywhere that hosts videos. Um, and I'm going to look for a picture, you know, a video of um, a cat, I think. Let's continue the theme. So here we are. Pictures of cats. There we are. And all I'm going to do is take the URL up there at the top, just you know, copy that. Go back to Popcorn Maker. And in the media tab here, I'm literally just going to, you know, paste that in there. Now the really clever thing about uh, Popcorn Maker is that it's got um, fallbacks. So if you, for example, upload your video to YouTube and Vimeo, um, then you can put a fallback URL. I haven't got this one. But if I did, then it means that if the YouTube video became unavailable for whatever reason, then it would just go back to the, the Vimeo version. And I really like that. So there we are. It's just loaded my YouTube video in there of Lolcats. And if I press play, it's literally just going to play that video again. So I've already got some events in here. So I'm just going to take those out. There we are. I can zoom in and out of the timeline using this little bar at the bottom left. You can see there. And oh, press back too soon there. Let's try that again. Okay. Right, so I'm just going to delete these events. Yeah. And what you can do then is you can you can add pop-ups, you can add um, themes and voiceovers and all that kind of stuff. So let's say that I wanted to know where these cats were. Well, I could drag a Google Map onto the timeline, um, and I could decide how long I want to show it for. So let's say that um, it's default to Toronto, because that's one of where one of our offices is. But let's say you know I want that over here somewhere, just to show um, where these cats were. Um, and in this one in particular, in this in this Google Map, um, then I can say what kind of of map I want. Uh, and then I say, you know, where, where do I want it? So I'm going to say Newcastle upon time, which is where I am. There we are. Um, I can say whether I want that full screen or not. I can say how zoomed in I want it. Um, for example, there we are. Or 10, or whatever it's going to be. Transitions, you know, I can pop in, can do whatever. And now when I play the video, you can see how that pops in. Okay, and it's because it's the web, it's fully scrollable. You know, you can move it around, you can do whatever you want. Um, okay, but also I might be interested in, well, what are people talking about on Twitter in terms of, of cats and that kind of thing? So I'll go back to events. I go on to Twitter, another layer. Um, and by default, actually, it actually defaults to kittens. But we're going we're gonna to do lol cats. All right. How many tweets do you want? How do you want to come in? Um, I like things popping in. Um, it can be a ticker that goes on the bottom. It can be whatever you want. Um, and you can move this about. You can resize it and do various things. I'm just going to stick it over there. Okay. Go back down over plan to replace GCSEs with lolcat. How good would that be? So um, here we go. Uh, there's my map. The video is playing in the background. And it just pulls in a live feed of um, Twitter, which is fantastic. And there's all sorts of other events. You can put images in. You can make it loop bits. You can skip bits and pause it. You can pull in Wikipedia things and all sorts of stuff. And because this is, this is HTML5, you can um, pretty much define your own events and, and bring those in as well. Okay. We're, this is very much under development. So one of the things we want to do is remix uh, the, the two tools that we've got in terms of Thimble and Popcorn Maker so that you can actually edit the HTML code behind what's going on here in the timeline. And if we've got time, I'll show you a, a development version of that. But what I really like is that you can do almost anything you want here. Because for example, you can add a pause in 
and then you can ask questions. Let's say you put a pause in there, um, and then one of the events you might put in is some text on the screen. So, you know, you say, um, I used to teach history. So this might be an interpretations video. Um, you know, what what can you find out about to attitudes to cats in 2013 from this video? Something like that. And then it pauses, you know, answer the question um, and do that kind of stuff. And that could be something which is self-directed learning, it could be in the classroom, so you have to you know fiddle about with pausing and stuff. Um, it just adds a lot more options to what you can do. And of course, another thing to mention is that um, come next month, Popcorn Maker will have badges. So when you do things in Popcorn Maker, you'll be able to level up in your skills to do with video as well. So that's quite a nice thing to do. When you've saved your video, and I'm just going to once again invite all. Oops, it's under development, so sometimes you do get errors. But this one's let me keep on working. Invite all CPD test. Once I've saved it. I can then share it. And you can see here I've got my unique um, URL. I can preview it. I can see the source of it. Um, and I can also, like with YouTube, I can put it into an iframe and I can embed it um, anywhere I want. So you can actually see this in action on my website. I did this, um, I got quite excited about a version of this a while ago. And I embedded the, you know, when I said that there was going to be a thimble popcorn maker mashup. Well, when Brett Gaylor, who's our director of, of web making, um, announces. I got quite excited and I did my Last FM top artist. Now if you haven't seen Last FM, it's basically a way which you can um, track what what you listen to. And I've been doing that for the last ten years. So you can see here I don't know if you can hear that, but basically I've got a soundtrack going on, a bit of Bon Iver in there. Um, so I'm just using this as a as like a video slideshow really. I could bring in, you know, tweets, I could bring in anything I want. But you can use it as a very flexible tool and because of web native, you can embed it anywhere that takes to HTML. So I find that really, really exciting. Any questions about that? It's great. Um, so can you say a little bit more about the popcorn badges that are coming, please? Yeah, absolutely. So um Th this is Brett Gaylor's uh, blog. Um, Brett Gaylor is actually a film director and he's on writer documentary maker. Um, he, he wrote Rip, a remix manifesto. Um, he made that documentary um, a few years ago and he's now our kind of senior director of, of web maker. Um, and I'm just going to have to go back through it. Here we are. Um, so this is it here. I'll go back to my blog post, it might be actually faster. There we are. So in this blog post, which is called New Webmaker Prototypes, which he posted um, almost a month ago now, he called it Webmaker X. That's kind of uh, what we do. We call new projects Webmaker X. But you can see here it says live branch webmakerx.toolnest.org forward slash and it's got a bit of a crazy URL. But if you go to Brett's blog and you go back down to New Webmaker Prototypes, you can see stuff which is in development. At Mozilla, we work completely in the open. Um, our calls are open to the community um, and we kind of develop our stuff in the open as well. So, so this is it. Um, and you can see that you've got there on the left hand side, you've got the familiar kind of thimble editing window. And on the right hand side, you've got a video preview this time instead of a, a web page preview. And it's got the, it's got the um, timeline at the bottom. So it means that you can see here, for example, three classic rock and roll acts. Um, when I change this to, I don't know, five classic rock and roll acts, yeah, it's going to change it. And when you do live demos, things never work straight away. <laughs> but um, essentially, what I really like about this is that sometimes I make videos which rely on absolutely um, micro kind of second syncing. So for example, someone says something and something pops on the screen. Someone does something and you go, boom, there it is. And that can be quite hard to do when you're, you're dragging elements on a timeline. But you can see here when it says um, sec section data active during, that's basically a tag which says, you know, it needs to be available. And you can go down to the thousandth of a second here. Um, it needs to be available here. Now, when you change that, you can see it moves the, the timeline at the bottom. So it means that everything about this is, is editable. And I really, really like that. Um, you can mess about with almost everything. 
Now, I'm not going to push this too hard. You can see it's got the CSS in there and everything as well. I'm not going to push this too hard because it's a prototype, um, and I broke it several times when I was making my, my video. Um, but this is something which is on the roadmap, and let me show you the roadmap now as well. Because um, we've got a kind of a plan for what we're doing for the, for the rest of 2013, um, and this is one of the things which is on there. So if you go to the Mozilla Wiki, which is at wiki, wiki.mozilla.org, forward slash webmaker with a big W and forward slash roadmap with a big R. Then you can see this is the um, the Mozilla team's roadmap for um, webmaker in 2013. So here we are. It tells you what's going to happen to Popcorn Maker, what's going to happen to the webmaker website, to Thimble, to everything. And the great thing about Mozilla and the thing which I really enjoyed even before I started working for Mozilla is that you can get involved in, in shaping the direction that these tools and the content and everything takes by providing feedback on what's going on. You can join community calls. You can um, give feedback to the individuals if they're approachable. You can, you know, they all blog. You can, you can give them feedback there. So um, it might be interesting for you to play about with the tools, which is what I'm going to ask you to do now. Um, and then just have a look at the, the roadmap and see whether there's anything which you'd like to see which which is not on there. And if it's not, then um, you can either give feedback to me or you can give feedback to Brett or Erin or anybody who's involved really in, in these kind of uh, projects. So I'm going to pause there for questions before I send you off to um, do some work, I suppose. Thank you, Doug. Could, could you say a little bit more about the summer code party that you mentioned? Um, is, is that now evolving into a whole year-round um, thing? <laughs> yeah, we party all the time now. Um, so yes, we had a summer code party last year, and the idea was to have as many different events as you possibly could all around the world, um, and get people who maybe had only just messed about with code, you know, you know, when we say code, we're talking HTML and CSS mainly. Um, had, had messed about with it a little bit, get them to see a bit more, and also people who had never messed about with it before. So we had, oh, hundreds of events in, in you know, many, many countries of the world. Um, I'm just trying to find out, what, I think Max Thompson had an overview of this. I'm just doing this on the fly, I do apologize. Um, but I ran one at the Centre for Life in Newcastle and had about 50 people there. Um, and there were kids from kind of seven years old through to you know adults. Um, and we just messed about with those three tools. And we spent an afternoon just making projects and just we celebrated success halfway through and shared what we were doing and just mixed people up and people did like code pairs and wonderful people came along to help, like you know, Steve Bunce, I know as part as part of the Vital Network and um, then we just celebrated at the end and they had something to take home with them which was on the web. And there was one kid who came along who had you know, had, had never even seen the back end of a web page before. Um, and yet he had hacked in inverted commas. Um, his Taekwondo web page, he, I think he was a nine year old actually. Um, and he just changed all of the faces of all of the instructors on the Taekwondo website with pictures of like cats and dogs and stuff. And he thought that was hilarious. But he managed to publish that and then show his family at the end. Um, so yeah, there were loads of people sharing things all over the place. And there's there's a webmaker, Tumblr actually. Um, see if I can that. Oh yeah, so it's mozillawebmaker.tumblr.com. Um, and what that does is it just surfaces stuff that people are doing. So if you scroll back far enough, then you'll see the the summer of code. There's going to be another one this year. We're going to kick off in about June um, and have people doing a similar kind of thing again. Um, I have made the point that people tend to stay indoors more in the winter time rather than the summer time, but um, I think the sunshine just makes people happier. I don't know. So we're going to have another summer code party this year. You'll notice that Mozilla is doing so much awesome stuff. Um, I mean, it's a total first world problem that I'm going to spend two days of my life later this month reviewing games for one of my colleagues. Um, we've got a, a game on competition, which is what I'm scrolling through here, for example, um, where people have this competition for people who make games, web native games, the HTML5 games, um, and I'm going to be one of the kind of uh, judges for that. Um, so Mozilla is doing lots and lots of stuff, which is all open, it's all free, it's all web native, and it should be available in, and, and should be able to use in pretty much any browser unless your school is locked to IE6, which it should not be. Um, 
so yeah, just have a look at some of the fantastic stuff that's going on all around the world because there's some really exciting things and at times when we have um, some depressing news sometimes from on high and some depressing news from um, what we're supposed to be doing, um, then I think it's just a, it's a really positive way to, to share some awesome stuff. Any questions? Otherwise, I'm going to send you off to webmaker.org and, and ask you to come back in about 10 minutes with some, some questions. I'm going to be here if you want to ask questions in the meantime. No, I don't see anyone typing. Well, all right then. So if you go to um, webmaker.org, then um, you might want to have a play with all three of the tools, or if one of them takes your fancy, you might also want to delve right into that. But um, I'm just going to take, I'm going to stop screen sharing. I'm still going to be here on audio. So as you go along, as you mess about with the tools, if you've got any questions and your audio is working, then just you know shout out a question. Or if you just want to ask it in the text chat, you can totally do that as well. So um, if we say that we reconvene about quarter to eight, um, and then we'll just finish off with some Q&A, if that's OK. I feel like I should play some incidental music now. So. Okay, so Sarah is asking, how do you clip video in Popcorn Maker? Um, by that, do you mean kind of sequence it, like se um, put one video after another? And cut it down. Okay, so um, the kind of, at the moment, um, it's kind of a, a tool for augmenting video. But you can see on the, on the roadmap that um, se being able to sequence video, being able to say, I just want that bit of the video, I want to be able to put that um, and juxtapose it with this and then have this bit and this bit, that's um, under development at the moment. So um, the thing which we're all working towards is the uh, DML conference, which is uh, the 14th to the 16th of March um, next, next month. It's one of those things where it, it serves as, a, as an endpoint for lots of people's work. So. By the DML conference, I'm hoping that we're going to have the ability to, to say, yes, I want that bit of the video clip, um, and I want to put that um, before this bit of the video clip, etc. But as I said, we're having a, a release a week of this uh, this popcorn maker tool, so um, I shouldn't be I should imagine that it'll probably come sooner rather than later. What's okay. the DML conference, Doug? Oh, sorry. Um, the DML conference is um, the Carter. So, right, backtrack. Um, Where's Mozilla get his money from? Mozilla gets his money from um, Google. It puts the Google search um, bar in the Google search box in Firefox, for example. But also, it gets money from uh, people like you and me, who donate money um, to a nonprofit. Um, it also gets some grant money from people like the MacArthur Foundation. And the MacArthur Foundation is a huge philanthropic um, organization that focuses on education. So, for example, most of our work around badges is, is funded by the MacArthur Foundation. Um, and it runs um, something called um, DML, Digital um, Media and Learning. And it has this whole connected learning initiative. So one of the things it does as part of that, as well as have this wonderful blog, which I happen to write for, um, called DML Central, which I'll spend the chat, dmlcentral.net. Um, it runs this, this conference. Um, so people who you might have heard of, like uh, John C. D. Brown and Kathy Davidson and uh, uh, Mimi Ito and you know, big names in kind of the education space come together and, and lead conversations and Dana Boyd, like those type of people. 
Um, and it's a wonderful event. And yes, it is in Chicago, and it is you know in the in the states. But um, there's a lot of stuff which happens online around the DML conference. Um, and because of the way our work is funded, and because of the fact that it's a good place to launch stuff, that's where, for example, my web literacy's work is going to be launched, and the popcorn maker stuff, and badges things, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay, thanks. It sounds really interesting. Oh, it is. It is. Um, I, yeah, I um, I went there last year, actually before I joined Mozilla, and it was just mind-blowingly awesome. It's in San Francisco. Kevin, any questions? Sarah, any more questions? Otherwise, I think I'll just let you two other things. I'm at DJ Bellshaw on Twitter. Um, and I'm just Doug at MozillaFoundation.org if you've got any questions via email or indeed anyone listening to the recording. So um, I think, Janet, we possibly could end it there if you haven't got anything more to ask of me. No, I think that's great. Thank you very much. I think uh, that's a really fantastic overview and I definitely want to use them more. So thank you. Not a problem. Okay. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, have a good evening. <laughs>